Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the third in our series of online panel discussions, uh, Conversations on Glass by Apice, that's taking place as part of the fourth edition of the Venice Glass Week, which is the international festival dedicated to the art of glass, taking place here in Venice and around Murano too, from the 5th to the 13th of September 2020. My name is Camilla Purden, and my role is Festival Coordinator of the Glass Week, which is organized by a committee made up of five of the institutions and organizations here in Venice that operate in, um, in, the, in the field of glass, uh, known for their expertise in this area. Those organizations are the George Lucchini Foundation with the Stan Le Stanza del Vetro project, the Fondazione Musei Civici, the Istituto Veneto di Scienze Lettere d'Arti, the Consortio Promovetro Murano and the Comune di Venezia. Uh, this year, for the first time, uh, we're really happy to be presenting a series of online panel discussions, seven discussions under the umbrella Conversations on Glass by Apice. Apice, as many of you will know, is one of the most prestigious transportation companies in the world, but particularly known for its expertise in uh, uh, transporting and handling art, works of art, and especially works of glass which makes them the perfect sponsor for the Venice Glass Week. Um, every day during the festival, we're presenting a, a different topic, a conversation on a different topic relating to the, uh, to the, to the field of glass, um, involving high profile speakers from Italy and abroad, um, with the aim of providing a platform for reflections and discussion on different topics relating to glass. Um, the conversations are happening in English rather than Italian, um, particularly because this year due to the complications of international travel, we wanted to provide uh, a project during the festival opportunities for our international audiences and especially those who might have been hoping to come to Venice this year, but for one reason or another, unfortunately, are not able to be here today. Um, we, the speakers, are uh, connected by Zoom today, but all of our audience is connected by YouTube. Um, so you're following this conversation live and we really welcome you to uh, ask any questions that you might have of the of the speakers. If you do have a question, um, just put it in the chat section of YouTube and we'll relay them to our moderator who at the end of the conversation will pass them on to the speakers so you'll be able to hear their answers. Um, today's conversation is a particularly special one because it's actually dedicated um, and being run by the team from Apice. So we've got various speakers from different um, departments of, of the company. Um, the title is Fragile, Handle with Care, the Fine Art of Transporting Glass. And the, uh, the conversation is being moderated today by Marcia Scalon. Uh, so hello, Marcia. Um, Marcia um, attended the Foscari University here in Venice um, and is a graduate of the Faculty of Literature and Philosophy in the disciplines of art, music and entertainment. She holds the qualification of Technician in Restoration of Cultural Heritage, which she gained at the Istituto Spinelli in Florence. And she has a master's degree in fine arts from Sotheby's Institute of Art in London. She's worked as an independent registrar and journalist and is a member of the editorial staff of Saggi e Memoria di Storia dell'Arte, a periodical which is published by the Giorgio Cini Foundation, which as I mentioned is, is a member of the organizing committee of the Venice Glass Week. For the Cini Foundation, Marzia works in the role of curator of the incredible Glass Study Center of the Institute of Art History, which although closed to the public at the moment, is sometimes available, especially during the Venice Glass Week, for special guided tours, and you can have a chance to see the most remarkable archives that um, are held within that. So in due course, um, perhaps next year during the Venice Glass Week, I sincerely hope that you'll all be able to go, and Mar Marcia will be able to introduce you to the phenomenal, um, phenomenal uh, archives that are there. Um, but Marzia also works coordinating part of the scientific activities that are carried on within the project Le Stanza del Vetro on the island of San Giorgio Maggiore, where this year, as part of the Venice Glass Week, you can see a remarkable exhibition on Venice and American studio glass. So thank you very much, Marzia. I think perhaps now I might hand over to you and you could kindly introduce all of the speakers that we've got here today. As I mentioned, everyone from Apice. And then once you've introduced everyone, maybe you'd like to, to fire away with some of the questions that I know you've got lined up and everybody's going to give their uh, a little presentation based on their own area of expertise. So thank you. Thank you so much, Camilla. <laughs> And good morning and uh, welcome also from me and um, thanks for 
that are present here and to those connected on the YouTube page. Um, to, before starting, I really would like to thank Apice for inviting me to moderate this conversation, which, as Camilla was mentioning, um, is part of a wider program of conversations taking place during these days of the Venice Glass Week. And before starting, um, uh, I also would like to thank the uh, people who are connected on the, on the page of YouTube and that are uh, sustaining and supporting the uh, Glass Study Center in these days. Um, as we all know, today's meeting is entitled uh, Fragile, Handle with Care, um, the Fine Art of Transporting Glass, and is dedicated to the uh, technical uh, engineering and logistic aspects related to the transportation of glass. So we will discuss about handling, packing, unpacking, um, transporting, and of course, displaying glass artworks. And the first speakers involved in this are all part of the team of Aperture, and they will focus on specific topics, highlighting from different perspectives the importance of professionality, technology, and research in their job. Um, well, at this stage, I'm passing the word to the first of them, uh, that is Alice Zanon, uh, who is the reference person for the exhibitions of Le Stanze del Vetro, and consequently, I'm pretty sure she has a great practice and experience, and that she will be glad to give us a general overview of the uh, different activities carried on by our company. Alice, over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, thank you for introducing me. And uh, first of all, uh, I want to say thanks uh, to uh, all of you and uh, to all the participants at uh, this uh, session this evening. Um, we, uh, we are the sponsorship of uh, uh, the Venice last week. And for us, it's very, very important because we started in 2017 to sponsor the Glass Week because we believe uh, that uh, to, to be the sponsor and to help uh, and uh, to be the participant of this project uh, will help uh, all the banks uh, and uh, world overview about the transporting and movement of uh, glass artworks uh, in the world. Uh, we believe in this, we believe in the research, and we want to um, improve our, um, our um, possibilities uh, to do it better and better uh, every year and every moment. Uh, as you uh, said, we we are um, transporters in uh, all over the world. And uh, for to do this, uh, we try to meet also our offices because we have uh, four offices uh, in uh, the main Italian cities. So Florence, Milan, Rome, and Venice, of course. Uh, Apice um, was a project uh, founded in 2008, and uh, we were not uh, a unique company. We were four different uh, companies, and uh, to improve our job, because it's a very particular job, and it's very beautiful <laughs> in the opinion, um, we, uh, we wanted to do a unique company to guarantee the safety and uh, the, um, the handle with the care of, of this artwork. We, um, we, are, we have a lot of services, uh, integrated services, uh, and to uh, meet uh, all the requests in all the territory, we do also a symposium. Uh, a symposium uh, which is uh, all of the companies uh, every two years uh, in order to, uh, to know the preferences uh, in uh, all of the Italian territories. Okay, 
So um, where do you, uh, where do, do the symposia take place? And uh, uh, can you provide us with more details about this symposia? Yes, of course. Uh, usually we do the symposium in Florence because as I said before, we have uh, four offices uh, so between uh, Milan, Florence, Rome and Venice. So Florence uh, is uh, the best logistic <laughs> point. Um, we uh, try to, um, to speak uh, one to each other to understand uh, the preferences of the museums uh, or also private lenders uh, in all the Italian territories. Uh, it means that maybe uh, something that is not requested in Rome could be in Venice uh, or in Milan. So, um, or maybe in uh, Milan, usually, or in France, uh, they have a new material, so they can uh, present it, and maybe it is better for the private, inside the private one. So, uh, we believe that uh, this symposium uh, can improve uh, the safety of uh, the artists, because this is uh, the main point uh, for us, because we have to guarantee to our clients is that the artists are always safe. And we do also other meetings in, uh, in all over the world uh, every year. Um, in uh, last year was in the US uh, because we have a lot of meetings with, with all of the companies in other countries because uh, we have to guarantee the safety for all the travel. No? So if uh, we have to ship to the US, uh, we have to know how they work uh, in the US uh, or in Germany, in Spain, uh, in Abu Dhabi, <laughs> in uh, all the parts uh, of uh, the world. So uh, this is important and these meetings uh, that uh, um, sometimes involves, involve also uh, the earth, uh, the logistics, uh, register meeting. So in this uh, occasion, we can meet also registrars, uh, and it is very important because we can understand better the records uh, and we can uh, uh, speak uh, face to face. So we we, we do everything uh, to finalize uh, our our job. <laughs> Excellent. And before you were also mentioning the integrated services. Yes, uh, we, uh, as I told you before, we, um, we have to guarantee safety for all the, the, the transport. Uh, the first point is uh, the contact with the lender, because uh, sometimes uh, we have the museums uh, and they know very know what they want. Uh, so uh, they know that they will need a special freight uh, or they don't want it to do uh, a nail shipment, but they prefer a transport by, by truck. Uh, but sometimes uh, we have a private planners and, and sometimes they don't know the specific packing material or how they can do the insurance or uh, the best uh, way to ship. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, in Venice, uh, they are a little bit scared <laughs> about the boat transport <laughs> because we have uh, to, to, there is a, a big freight, so we have to use a train boat. Uh, so we have to explain uh, every time uh, our service that starts uh, for the, uh, the contact with the lender and explaining which is uh, maybe the best packing. Moreover, for uh, the glass artists, because uh, as uh, you told before, uh, I started working with Santa in 2012, and um, we are specialized in to transfer glass artists because they are always scared that, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> with my very, very fragile uh, artwork. Yeah. And so we can explain. We can offer also services uh, for the fine art formalities, uh, for customs formalities. Uh, um, uh, moreover, we, uh, we can 
Alka also for the museums uh, when they want to make sure that everything will, will be done in the correct way, they use museums and the courier. The courier is a delegate of the museum uh, who needs to be present in all the process from the museum, so the land museum, to the organized museum. And uh, sometimes they have also to ship by air, so we can offer the customs, uh, the formalities, the final formalities, the supervision at the airport, so they can enter to the cargo area with us, and they can supervise the loading of uh, the, their crate or their crates, <laughs> more than one, and then they can assist the, at all the, the steps of uh, the movement. Uh, we also provide the same service uh, at the arrival, so that's why we want to know very, very well uh, our um, collaborator at the other side, so at the receiving in, uh, in all the other countries. And um, we can also offer for the import, so if uh, an artist come from another country, we can uh, offer the same services here. Of course, that comes non final formalities. We have more than uh, 5,000 square meters uh, of warehouses. And uh, we have also a bonded warehouse because uh, um, the Italian custom is uh, the more particular one <laughs> all over the world. And we have to be very, very precise with everything. So with values, with uh, weights, uh, everything. And we can offer also a special thing that uh, we are the only ones that have this thing. So we can uh, provide uh, the import. So the um, bonded, we have a bonded warehouse and uh, it is uh, like a free port. And it permits uh, to our um, clients in general to, to uh, not so guarantee to the customs uh, a sum, so a money and import, uh, and uh, they can use our bonded warehouse that guarantee to the customs that uh, they are always safe. Oh, wow. uh, seems good. Yeah. <laughs> Satisfied. Uh, thank you so much, Alice. That was very helpful. Thank, thank you. you much. Okay, I'm also very interested now in the projects of another, of another branch of uh, the group Apice, which is uh, uh, Otart. And maybe Annalisa Guttardo, as part uh, of the technical department of Otart, and having a background uh, uh, in industrial design, can uh, could kindly uh, provide us with more details about her duties and uh, projects. Annalisa, can you tell us a few words about this? Yeah, sure. Hi, Marcia. Hi, everybody. Um, as you mentioned, um, the keen of Apice uh, to innovation and uh, specialization in the field of art uh, brought uh, uh, to the establishment of a dedicated uh, branch that became a company named Otart. And um, since 2000, Otart uh, Layas with the uh, major architecture studios and uh, has uh, engineered and produced setups for many exhibitions and uh, um, a temporary and museum. Uh, for example, in 2012, uh, Otart engineered and manufactured and installed the vitrines for the exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum in New York of uh, Carlo Scarpa that uh, you mentioned uh, yesterday during the, the other conversation about collectors and that we are very proud of it. I have to say, I have to admit. Um, so the core business of Otart is uh, engineering and production of uh, cases, vitrines and set up for museums. It can be, as I said, temporary or uh, permanent and the process goes from the first idea uh, or concept to the final installation on site. 
Okay. So how is your team composed and uh, what professional figures are part of it? Yeah, uh, well, we uh, can uh, rely on different uh, professionals, uh, for example, designers, uh, architects and engineers in order to use technology as much as possible to uh, gather the in-depth information we need to succeed in the process. So we can use um, specific programs to get, for example, 3D files, 3D modeling of artworks in case that they need to be processed in simulation to check stress points and anchor points uh, to, to handle the artworks themselves. And every project, like, of course, every artwork has uh, its uh, own uh, specificity and uh, glass especially as uh, as you know there are so many uh, production techniques that leads to different characteristics and also uh, is a material that gives possible geometries and shapes uh, that has to be treated differently the, um, the uniqueness of glass uh, comes also from the history of the material itself like uh, a glass has been uh, a material to make products to be intended to be used by person. And on the other hand, they were decorative objects. Therefore, this places the glass objects and artworks uh, very uh, different from other artworks like paintings and sculptures, for example. Great. And you were talking before about uh, the installation of uh, Carlos Scarpa, the setup. Uh, and I am wondering, as all the artworks, uh, also glass um, delivers a message or may deliver a message. Um, can you uh, eventually mention one piece of glass or one exhibition uh, where uh, these kind of messages uh, were particularly enhanced or evident? Mm -hmm. I see. Um, yes, um, as a first thing to say, usually our setups are meant to be as neutral as possible to not interfere to, uh, with the message, uh, unless it's something that has been explicit request of the art director or the curator. Uh, maybe if there is a scenography, we of course uh, follow the, the plan of it. And I think about uh, at Le Stanze del Vetro, uh, in occasion of the exhibition of Ettore Sozzas, the request was to have uh, the display of vases in the most free way as possible to the public to perceive them and to place them at a high of eye level. And therefore we uh, produced and designed pedestrals with a minim minimal design and uh, also the other parts of the exhibition, uh, the objects were held in open backlit uh, shelves. So there was no barrier, no glass protection. And that meant also to respect the, the artist's principle of not having glass behind glass, which is a tricky topic for us every time and with glass especially. Uh, this can be an issue sometimes, and uh, therefore we can uh, test and check different materials also for glass or plexiglass sometimes uh, to have the anti-reflective one. But this means to uh, foresee a special care of, of the material, both from manufacturing, handling, cleaning, all, all, the, all the aspects, and this has a different uh, impact from the economic point of view as well. So all in all, I think that our job is to balance the technological aspects of the project um, with the safety and uh, the exhibition requirements of the artwork and keeping a balance as well with the combining it with the more poetic instances that you mentioned at the beginning of the question. Thank you very much, Annalisa. I think these are uh, things that we um, give for granted, but uh, deserve to be explained. 
Um, well, perhaps at this point, uh, it might be helpful, helpful to uh, go deeper into uh, further aspects, some specific uh, uh, aspects related to the packing methods. Uh, uh, and the best figure to uh, illustrate this is maybe uh, Ricardo Alfare, uh, who is coordinator of handling and transport operations. Uh, uh, here we go, Ricardo. Good morning, Marcia. Good morning, everyone. So, um, talking about the past of artworks parking, especially artistic glass, we cannot forget the large use of straw that was divided by size and thickness and uh, strictly related to Packer's sensibility in relation to the fragility and weight of the artwork glass. Nowadays, straw has been dismissed in favor of trees, safeguard, and new materials closer to the industry needs. Briefly, first, uh, we use uh, cellophane, cellophane sieves that we normally use for packaging it in tissue paper or Tyvek to create pillows. Uh, second of all, uh, we use expanded polystyrene chips also, mostly used by commercial sector. Normally we don't use it because they are not so easy to model around irregular shapes, moving parts or protruding parts, and they can produce residues and mess during the process of packaging and unpacking. Third, uh, we use uh, tissue paper. This is very, very, it has been always used during the history of packaging. Today, now, nowadays is available completely acid free and uh, in different shapes and weights. So fourth, uh, we use budding produced by regeneration of textile processing wastes. Therefore, very interesting from the ecological side. It's more common for industrial use. You don't use it anyway, because it's not so moldable and it can leave some residues also. Um, fifth, cotton wool, it comes from medical industry. It can be very useful for little glasses objects because of its delicacy and malleability. The only problem is that it can get entangled on the irregularity of the surfaces. Um, sixth is the two component uh, expanded polyurethane forms. The use this material is possible. The use of this material is possible only with some kinds of full thickness glasses preparing the mix between the two components in relation to the weight of the glass. This technique is closer to industrial pieces production than to our reality, based on the uniqueness of the artwork. Seventh, the expanded polyurethane. It's a shock absorbing material with a lot of mechanical features chosen as a standard for what we call museum crate. Inert chemical material, very easy to shape with manual tools or hot cutters easy to find in every shape and thickness. This is what we normally use as material. Okay, so you were talking about eco materials, if I got well. And yeah. as far as you know, are there um, further studies regarding eco materials for handling and uh, packing uh, glass artworks? Sure, sure, sure. This is something really important for us, uh, the, the ecological side, because I would say that everything we do is related to environment respect and artwork safety. First of all, 30, 20 years ago, we have been conceiving this idea of a, a rental of crate, for example, so that everyone can afford a crate um, for a fixed term and paying much less than to buy one. And after that term, we take it back to recycle and recondition it for a new, for, for new transport. Another example is that we only use recycled uh, paper, paper, paper tape and our plywood has no fumigation uh, treatments. So this is quite important for the environment, I think. No fumigation, is it obligatory in some countries or isn't it? Absolutely. When, when, uh, when you go to Australia, these kind of areas, um, 
that have problems with it. You, you, can, you could contaminate their forests and stuff. Oh, yes, that's for yeah. bacteriological but It's for bacteria, so you kill all the bacteria with this treatment. I see. Okay, and um, what kind of wood, for example, do you use for crates? And uh, what... It's uh, popular plywood uh, because, uh, first of all, irrespective of nature, um, because it's uh, completely without resins and it doesn't need any uh, fumigation treatment because they treat it uh, naturally in a different way. It's very light, resistant, easy to shape because it's not solid wood. Yes. Do, you, do you know the provenance of the wood as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, all the popular wood we buy comes from French and Belgian industries related to um, forest recycling. Uh, all our wood is following the ISPM 15 procedure. It means a natural treatment without fire or gas that kills all the bacteria that could contaminate forests all around the world. And it allows us to bring our crates everywhere without any problem. Excellent. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks to you. I think it's worth now to uh, talk to Marco Nies, uh, who is logistics manager at Apice, and he will uh, focus on uh, safety and transport, giving us uh, uh, additional uh, aspects uh, to think uh, on. Marco, over to you. Good morning, Marcia. Good morning, everybody. So, yes. Uh, I uh, first, I wish to uh, imagine you what is the transportation of work of glass in Venice, because handling glass in Venice for us means work daily in all kinds of situations. So it can include both uh, part of truck shipment and water transport. So. It can include both manual lifting, manual handlings, and mechanical handlings. So uh, the particular uh, uh, ground of the city can be smooth and can be rough. So in many cases, we work at the upper floors or historical buildings with very, very um, uh, small entrances, you know, uh, a lot of difficulties uh, with, the, with the, the daily working. So, and water transport in Venice also includes some particular difficulties because we have to do, to think about the, the weather condition, for example, because, you know, the, the, the boats for good transport are open top are not closed as the van or the trucks, okay? So we have to consider uh, difficulties for fighting and loading or unloading docks in Venice to, to put the boat, to, to take the, the artworks and so on. So this is our daily working that is very, very uh, difficult and different from all the other cities and towns in the world. And that's the, the key to, to carrying out a fine art service in this situation is a continuous control of the whole process and therefore to maintain which we can call so a sort of chain, uh, a safety process, you know. So how can you be sure that you guarantee uh, the necessary safety in each process? Uh, well, uh, it can begin with, uh, uh, sure, with the preliminary phase, that is the pre-site on view. So with this stage, the first step, our qualified staff can take a measure uh, of, the, of, the, of the artworks is, is able to make an accurate site visit to consider all the various difficulties that we can find in every every uh, job, daily job. So for example, uh, you can try to, to imagine uh, regarding, for example, 
uh, 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 chandeliers uh, is so important uh, for us to, to take a visit uh, uh, in order to organize which equipment is necessary to remove, at uh, which height is put the chandeliers, uh, which is the, the main entrances of the, of the palace and so on. So this is the very first step to check that everything is under control and everything uh, is is signed for, uh, for to continue the, the, the correct service. Okay. So first is the pre-site of visit. Then uh, all the information uh, are transmitted to our department. Okay. And uh, with with this all this passage, our department is uh, able to do the correct instruction to our technicians. Then I think that uh, my colleague spoke about the materials. I don't know. I don't want to repeat uh, what my colleague told, but uh, we 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 specialized. We create a, a particular type of of crate for the, the, the art, the, the work of glass, you know, that is a sort of double crate. So, uh, and then in this double crate, you can uh, uh, maintain uh, the maximum uh, safety of the object because uh, first the object is wrapped in tissue paper and then we can move this firstly, this object in a sort of a uh, box of uh, middle carton and wooden box. Mm -hmm. And this small box is put inside a museum crate, you know. And this museum crate has uh, also uh, a, a sort of a smooth, uh, um, uh, smooth foods in, in order to get all the, uh, the, the maximum amortization of the, of the crates, you know. I so, yes. So uh, after this, uh, the the packaging is complete. Our our technicals put uh, uh, labels on crate. Crate after crate is numbered. Uh, every crate is numbered with uh, its number, progressive number. So is uh, we we can guarantee that this uh, the crate transport only that piece. Okay, so another passage is uh, the road, uh, the manual transportation, the manual handling in Venice. Okay, so uh, the manual handlings uh, must provide with an adequate number of technicians uh, in, Venice, in minimum two to guarantee all the manual lifting phases uh, to avoid any tilting, any bumping on the crates yeah. because of the, 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 the particular pavement of Venice, we have to, 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 to move the crates with the uh, pneumatic, with pneumatic uh, wheels and machinery. Okay. And then we have to carry the, the crates uh, throughout the Cali or Venice, you know, and uh, 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 for the loading of, of, of our our boat transport, uh, we must we must uh, make sure that everything every piece is stripped and uh, and slinged in the correct way, and uh, also in every every uh, step of the transport uh, is supervised by one of our operator. Also, if is a mechanical, a mechanical lifting. Yeah. So then uh, the crate is put safe in our barges and then the reverse from the dock to the trucks, all the steps are supervised from our operators. The crate stays uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in, in the safest position from the barge to the trucks and then once loading in our trucks is ready to, to ship all, all around the world, you know. Yes, I know, I see. I'm always fascinated 
by these uh, loggers who register the movements and uh, vibrations uh, when the crate uh, moves. So that's incredibly technological. <laughs> um, do you think, Marco, that there are um, countries where glass pieces are treated uh, differently from Italy? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, basically, because um, in, the, in the foreign uh, land, uh, the, they, they work with a different kind of glass. So glass is uh, thick and, and, and solid. Uh, the, the, the very different the difference between the, 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 the other countries, uh, Italy and Venice in particular, that uh, we are used to work with um, light and uh, blown irregular glass. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we studied uh, a, a specific uh, museum crate that is different from which the, the crater we see uh, arriving for the foreign countries that uh, that uh, is similar to a, a basic sculpture crate. You know? I see. Yes. And um, maybe we haven't covered one topic that is uh, very important uh, and which regards the insurance aspects. Um, yeah. So, as far as private collectors or museums. Um, I'm wondering, do they ask for specific or particular uh, insurance uh, um, policies? Uh, yes, uh, sometimes uh, private lenders ask for that, yes. Uh, but um, we, we suggest, we suggest a, a most uh, exhibition to, to, to use our our brokers uh, because you know um, work uh, work of glass uh, could be more easily uh, uh, broken than other other parts other kind of uh, work of art so and uh, and if it's broken it could be totally broken so it could be totally depreciated respect another work of art. So that's the reason why the insurance is a, a main point of this, of this service. And uh, with, our, uh, with our quality of crates and services and uh, historical uh, services, uh, all the exhibition we, we arranged here in Venice in the world, we can, we can assure uh, the lowest rates for uh, with the main uh, insurance companies. So that's the reason why we suggest to use ours. And I think they are specialized in the glass sector. Your broker yeah. is... Yes, so we can have yeah, all risk Important. coverage with 100% uh, of a refund. Yes, fine art insurance, obviously. That's a great guarantee for the lenders. The guarantee for the lenders, yes, yes. All risk coverage from nail to nail, yes. From the, the moment that we pick up from the, the lender to the exhibition and return. And uh, regarding your experience, your personal experience, what's the heaviest piece of glass or the most complicated artwork that you had to mount and to set up? <laughs> the the heaviest uh the heaviest oh well uh, complicate uh maybe uh, this uh the last one at the stanza del vetro <laughs> the american with the american glass <laughs> uh, because of uh, a, a lot of uh, number of piece and uh, it, it was it was funny, but it was a good experience. Yes. <laughs> Caring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. You mean the Chiuli, right? Yes, the Chiuli exhibition. Very not amazing. And the and I remember uh, once there was a, a Russian courier who had to come to Venice with a canvas, and. Mm wanted me uh, when I worked as a registrar 
a registrar, he uh, who wanted me to buy a ticket, a business uh, uh, seat on the plane to put his uh, artwork because he didn't want to uh, store it in the plane, but to, he wanted to travel next to it. So it was <laughs> incredibly fun, but it may happen. It may happen. <laughs> so uh, what, what, I'm sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. That was just to say that there are strange requests from lender. Yes, yes. also because uh, a lot of people doesn't know Venice, doesn't know the, the, the reality. So uh, yes, just I want to underline that the importance of what uh, my colleague Alice told at, um, with the first conversation, that is the, the importance for us is that all various steps of shipment are constantly monitored. So from the first step I mentioned with the precise view uh, to the instruction to our operational offices, to the supervision of our job in Venice, the supervision of the tr loading the barge and the truck. So after the truck transport is uh, continuous monitored um, by our um, by our final truck at a, that has uh, a GPS control has dual drivers on board so every time connected to our office from the unloading maybe if we are talking about an air freight shipment from the unloading uh, by the truck to the dock or the airport from the, the, the particular passage of the putting the crates inside the pallet, it's named palletization. We are, we are able to supervise it directly with our employees. From the movement of the pallet inside of the airport, okay, in the, in the internal uh, warehouse of the airport and from the warehouse of the airport to the airplane. So what is called tarmac supervision, we are able to do also this till the introduction and the fixing on the pallet on the airplane. So we are able to uh, keep our client uh, um, informed about all the steps and then at the reverse from the unloading of the airplane till the final consignee in the foreign countries uh, towards our uh, correspondence that um, are mentioned from Alice all around the world that we know not only with phone callings or just papers or just because we are usual to work, but it's a continuous uh, exchange of opinions uh, that we, we, we could concretize that we realize with annual uh, meetings, you know, and annual uh, workshops between us. Brilliant. Thank you. Just wanted to um, say one thing about uh, what you mentioned before, because there was a Russian uh, courier who wanted to take the artwork uh, by himself. Sometimes uh, we can do this. <laughs> of course, I don't know uh, the size of your artwork. Of course, we can't, uh, we are not allowed uh, to, um, to bring uh, an artwork for one meter for one meter <laughs> on board, uh, but sometimes uh, um, we offer also this service. So, for example, uh, in the past, uh, we transported a very, very little piece uh, uh, from Sicily to. And we did an hand carry. An hand carry is uh, a little carry, so a little bag, uh, of course, always made uh, by uh, artwork and materials, um, but uh, on top of the materials. And it permits to the courier to have an extra seat, so a seat close to him, and then they can fix it. Uh, on the on the seat, and uh, uh, we have also a guard that can uh, 
uh, assist the courier uh, from the gate of uh, the, the plane until the arrival on, on the plane to fix it, to be sure, also with the captain, if it's okay, if it's fine. And then the same thing for when they arrive to the other place, to the other country. They, we can do also this. Of course, I understood that it was not so small, but sometimes the company permits it, so we can do this too. Mine was small. Uh, I was lucky. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm now, I'm now checking if there are questions, uh, but um, it seems that uh, we haven't uh, questions from the public, let's say. And hopefully uh, this conversation has given the sense uh, of the mission and of the engagement of Apiche. Uh, in terms of uh, professionality and, of course, of uh, passion about art and about uh, the job they're doing. So I uh, do thank you all and I would like to thank Camilla and the Venice Class Week as well. And um, Camilla? handing back to you. Thank you so much, Marcia, and to all of our speakers. Um, on behalf of the Venice Glass Week and the organizing committee, uh, yeah, thank you so much for such an interesting and, and really enlightening conversation. Um, so many of us are lucky, lucky enough to be able to, to visit exhibitions on, on a regular basis, especially if we live in Venice. Um, but perhaps if you're not involved in the organizational side, it's, it's actually very easy to take for granted the extraordinary amount of work that goes on behind the scenes and the expertise that goes into the, the transportation and the handling and the display of all, all these incredible shows, um, and especially the complications of moving uh, works of art and glass, particularly in a city like Venice where boats are often involved and, and manual handling is required because the buildings are so incredibly small and, and fragile to say nothing of the glass itself. Um, obviously I work as the festival coordinator of the Glass Week. So I have some understanding and appreciation of, of the importance of specialist transportation and handling services. I know how incredibly reassuring it is to know that work art and glass are being transported and handled by an expert company like Apiche. And I also know how deeply worrying and actually terrifying it can be um, when you don't engage the services or well, when the services of a professional company like Apiche are not involved. So for peace of mind alone, um, you know, whether you're a coordinator or a curator, organizer or an artist, engaging the services of, of a company like Apiche is, is, is really priceless. So um, I've learned a huge amount during the talk um, and I'm sure that everybody listening today has as well. Um, you've opened our eyes to all sorts of different aspects of, of the field in which you work. And I know that I for one, but I'm sure everyone else will definitely, next time we visit an exhibition, whether it be at Listans or Del Vitro or elsewhere, we'll definitely have far more appreciation of all, all the, or some of what went, went on behind the scenes, thanks to your, your contributions today. So thank you so much, Marcia, our brilliant uh, moderator. Um, and to each of our speakers, Alice, Annalisa, Marco and Ricardo, and to everybody at Apiche in general, we, we really are so grateful to you for, for supporting the Venice Glass Week with this program of conversations. Um, we've got more to come, um, and I highly recommend if anyone is enjoying listening to this, uh, this morning's conversation, do tune in to the Venice Glass Week YouTube tomorrow, because I think if you enjoyed this, you'll definitely be interested in tomorrow's. That's Thursday the 10th of September at 5 p.m. Italian time. It's, it's a theme called Making Art, sorry, Making Glass Matter in Museums. So Making Glass Matter in Museums. And it's moderated by Thomas Marks, who's the editor of the Apollo magazine. And we've got a really prestigious lineup of, of speakers. We've got Caroline McCaffrey Howarth, who's the curator of the 17th and 18th century ceramics and glass department at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. We've got Carol White, who's the president and executive director of the Corning Museum of Glass. And we've got Reynold Franz from the Mac Museum of Applied Arts in Vienna, who's the curator of the glass and ceramics collection, responsible also for cross-collection uh, cross coordination and EU projects, as well as provenance research and restitution. So a really interesting lineup, a really interesting topic. Um, 
maybe the APJ team will tune into. Um, but for now, um, thank you all so much um, for participating in today's talk. Thank you to everybody at home who's been watching. Um, you can actually find this talk and all of the other conversations permanently recorded and, and kept on the Venice Glass Week YouTube channel. So if you didn't catch the whole talk or you want to see a couple of the talks that went on earlier this week, we had one on the theme of women in glass and then we had one on the theme of collecting glass today. Um, you'll be able to find them there and tune in tomorrow uh, at five o'clock for, for the next installment. So thank you very much indeed and see you, see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.